So good morning! Today, we are going to discuss easy way to understand income and business taxation more on value added tax. So let's start! What is value added tax? Value added tax is an additional burden that is imposed by BIR to the business. It is one form of business tax. In other words, aside from income tax 30% or MCIT 2%, business need to pay the value added tax. What is the difference of output tax minus the input tax? A value added tax is a business tax. So, how to compute? Actually, value added tax is constant. So, we have amount divided by 112 times 12 or amount divided by 1.12 times 0.12. So, because this is constant, you can also compute it to your output tax and to your input tax. Example, sales, service, or revenue divided by 112 times 12. And then, we, with regards to the input tax, you need to add the cost of sales plus the expenses divided by 112 times 12 in order to get the input tax. After getting the amount or the result, output tax minus input tax is equals the VAT or the value added tax. But what if the value added tax is not yet added on your sales? So what will you do? So easy, just multiply your sales or revenue to 112% to include both the sales and the output tax. So here's the computation. So through the output tax, we have the sales or service income or revenue multiplied by 12. So you will get now the output tax of your sales minus the input tax. And because input tax is already embedded with the 12% um, VAT, then what you need to do is to get the total amount of the cost and expense divided by 112 times 12 in order for you to get the value added tax. Okay, so we have the output tax minus input tax is equals to value added tax. So there are the different rules on value added tax. First one, when a business is just starting but already have 1.5 million sales at the start of operation, then BAR will use percentage tax on the first year of operation. However, on the second year, company will now apply to be a bottable business and will pay value-added tax. When a business is already operating but still have 1.5 million sales below, then it's the prerogative of the company whether to use the percentage tax or value-added tax. Suggestion here is it might be very good to use percentage tax instead of value added tax or VAT. When a business is LGU, not a for profit or any governmental unit, then it is not subject to value added tax but subject to presumptive 2% tax. So the threshold gross sales or receipt is 3 million. A purely self-employed individual and or professional who is VAT registered but whose gross sales or receipt now fall below the value added tax threshold of 3 million may change its status to non VAT and avail of the graduated income tax rate under Section 24, A2, and A of the NIRC as amended or an 8% tax on gross sale or receipt and other non operating income in excess of 250,000. In lieu of the graduated income tax rate and the percentage tax under Section 116 of the NIRC as amended. Note, once the option is made, such is already irrevocable for that particular taxable year. So, coverage of exempted expanded value added tax. First are the electric cooperatives, domestic shipping importation, power transmission, Locust housing, price more than 2 million, and socialized housing, price more than 450,000 until 2020. Number 5 is the list of presidential units, exceeding 15,000. Boy Scout of the Philippines, Philippine Sports Commission, PTV Network, Philippine Postal Corporation, Banco Central ng Pilipinas, PhilHealth, GSIS, and SSS. Additional exemption, so those 
who are selling of medicine prescribed for diabetes, high cholesterol, and hypertension beginning January 1, 2019. Sale of gold to the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Transfer of property under a de facto merger or consolidation, condominium and homeowners association dues, membership and other charges. Indirect importers are still but zero rated until the establishment and implementation of an enhanced VAT refund system. Criteria of enhanced VAT refund system. So what are the criteria? First criteria are all application filed from January 1, 2018 shall be processed and must be decided within 90 days from the filing of the VAT refund application. Note, failure on the part of the BIR official, agent, or employee to act on the application within the 90-day period is punishable under Section 269 of the NIRC as amended. And all pending VAT refund claims as of December 31, 2017 shall be fully paid in cash by December 31, 2019. Official Development Assistance or ODA projects are not subject to the final withholding VAT under Section 114-C. So let's start to compute the example of value-added tax. So here we will not just compute the value-added tax but we will also compute the income tax of the business. So, example number one is Company A have total sales for the year amounted to 7.5. So, total cost of sale is 1.29 million with operating expense of 2.1 million. So, we will need to compute the income tax and value added tax. So, here, so we have the total sales of 7 million 5 minus the cost. So, we have the gross profit of 6.21 million. And then, we need to deduct the operating expense of 2.1. So, our operating income before tax is 4,110,000. So, we need to compute the income tax by 30%. Again, uh, if your business is a corporation, then what you need to do is to compute the operating income before tax uh, to 30%. So, 4,110,000 times 30%. So, the payment of income tax is 1.233 million. Okay, so you need to pay it to the BIR. For the value-added tax, what you need to do is to divide the 7.5 divided by 112 or 1.12 multiplied by 12 to get the value-added tax of 803,571.43,000. Minus the input tax, so you need to get the 2.1 plus the 1.29 divided by 112 times 12 in order to get the input tax of 363,214.29. So when you deduct output minus the input tax, the another payment of uh, the businessman will be the business tax of 440,357.14. Again, uh, you need to pay 2 here, the income tax of 1.233 and then the business tax which is the value added tax of 443, uh, 440,357.40. Okay, let's go with the example number 2. So, example number 2 is company B had total sales of 14,508,90 already embedded the tax or the value added tax with 43% operating expense. So, compute the income tax and the value added tax. So, here's the computation. We have the 14,508.90 minus the operating expense of 14,508.90 multiplied by 43%. So, the operating expense is 6,235,382.70. So, when you deduct these two, you have the operating income before tax of 8,265,507.30. So, in order to get your income tax, which should be paid to the BIR, you need to multiply the operating income before tax by 30%. So, here's the result. 2,479,652.19 So, number 2 is you need to compute your business tax. So, because this is a corporation, we call it as the value-added tax. Output tax is 14,508,90 divided by 112 times 12 in order to get the output tax of 
1,553,666.79 and then the input tax of 6,235,382.70 divided by 112 times 12 so we have the input tax of 668,076.64 so the difference between the two will be your payment to the BIR so another payment will be made which is 885,000 590.15 as part of your value-added tax or business tax. Okay, so we have another last example, which is example number 3. So, company B had total sales of 40,508,90, which is the same. But here, the, the value-added tax is not yet added as 12% tax on the sales. So, total operating expense is 6,235,382.70. So, what will you do? Uh, what you need to do is to first multiply your 14,508,90 to the 12% back. So, you have 16,240,996.80 minus the given operating expense, which is the same with the example number 2A. So, we have 6,235,382.70. So, now the operating income before tax is 10,005,614. Point 10, which will be the basis for your income tax. You'll, so, you need to multiply it by 30%. So, your income tax now is 3,001,684.23, which should be paid to the Bureau of Internal Revenue. And another payment that will be made will be your value-added tax, which is um, 14,508,90 multiplied by 12. Because uh, in the sample, the value added tax or the output tax is not yet added to your sales. So, uh, instead of dividing, you multiply it by 12 in order for you to get the 12% tax or the output tax of 14,508,90. So, the result is 1,741,006.80, or which is your output tax. And then the input tax is the same with the computation with the 2A computation because uh, it is not discussed that the, the tax is not yet uh, added to the operating expense. So you assume that the tax is already added or the value added, the input tax is already added when you purchase your uh, supplies or your operating expenses. So you have 6,235,382.70 divided by 112 times 12. So, you get your uh, input tax of 668076.64. So, when you divide, uh, when you deduct these two, the output tax minus the input tax, so you have 1,072,030.16 which will be paid also to the BIR. Okay? So, that's the sample of module 7 about value-added tax. Thank you and I hope you learned something from me. Bye-bye!